Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching all that stuff. I appreciate it. I do hope you're doing well, staying safe and healthy out there. And for those of you that are new, I am Jim. It's great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here on YouTube every week showing you how I take various photos from beginning to end using different software products. Today I'm in Luminar 4 again. I do love Luminar 4. And I've got a photo here. I was actually writing an article for someone about um, Oregon and the Oregon coast and uh, putting some pictures in it and that sort of thing. So I was editing some photos and I came across this photo in my library. Uh, let me show you the photo. Here it is. And I really, really like that photo, partly because it's Haystack Rock in Cannon Beach, Oregon, which I just absolutely adore uh, that whole area. And uh, partly because it's a long exposure, which I also absolutely adore. And then partly just because it was a beautiful sunset, but being a long exposure, this is something like two minutes or something. Uh, everything's really smooth. A lot of the colors kind of washed out. So I turned it into that, and as you can see on the right-hand side, I used a lot of layers. I've got more layers than the movie Inception going on, but it was fun, and they were all specifically targeted to particular areas, and that's what's so great about layers and masking, which I'm going to talk about in this video. So I'm going to hit reset, and we're going to jump into the editing right now. Okay, here's the base layer. Only thing I've done is straighten it, and usually what I'll do on the base layer is play around with light and sometimes AI enhance, and what I'm doing here is giving a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to like a 33, 34, and then I'm taking the highlights down to about a negative 50. And so a very simple, straightforward kind of base layer adjustment. There's the before and the after. And honestly, I mean, I have a lot to work with. The light's fairly well balanced. I've got a little bit of contrast now. The highlights are under control and everything's ready to go. So this is where I'm gonna start doing some experimentation. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a new layer and it will be an adjustment layer as will all the others. And this is gonna be a look that I've got, and I've got this look Blue Hour 2. Uh, and, oops, uh, and these are just some uh, looks I've been generating and creating my own. Very intense color, so I'm gonna take that down a notch or five with a luminosity mask. I've been doing luminosity masks more often in uh, my videos, showing you how I use them. Here's another example of how I use them, and, that it, and I've done this before, but in case you haven't seen those videos, I'll take a a preset or a look like that one, which has been applied fairly heavily. And as you can see with the luminosity mask, it's much more gentle and I really like that. So the before, let me turn this layer off. There you go, a very kind of washed out color. And now it's, the colors are starting to pop and that's more like how I remember it. Um, but you know, I want it to be a little bit more intense. I do like my color, you did see the final results. So I'm actually just gonna duplicate this layer. Um, I'm just gonna hit duplicate and what it's gonna do, it's gonna take that luminosity mask and that blue hour look or preset, stick it on there again. But this time I'm gonna pull the adjustment amount down to about 40. And so that's basically hitting uh, the, the look 1.4 times, uh, not exactly, but you know, basically I put the look on with the luminosity mask, I liked it, but it was a little too subtle for me. I wanted a little bit more kick of color. So I basically just duplicated the layer. So it takes that look and that luminosity mask sticks them on another layer exactly. So I basically double up, but 2X was basically too much. So I pulled it down to a adjustment amount of 40. That's another way I like to use layers and luminosity masks and looks together is basically stacking them and then making adjustment amount adjustments uh, to reduce the intensity because as much as I like my color, I don't want it to be a super over the top, um, at least in my opinion, not a super over the top. Uh, colorful photos. So that's where I am now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a new adjustment layer. And here I'm going to use a gradient mask. And so gradient mask, just click on that. I'm doing this at the layer level, which means I'm going to apply the gradient mask and then all the filter or tool editing that I do with the tools over here on the right hand side for this layer will apply only in the area that I'm masking. So I'm going to drop this um, gradient mask down something about like that, basically into this uh, cover the sky. I want to get that just about right. So something about like that. If you click the eyeball, you can see the mask is basically applying to the sky uh, or I should say anything above the horizon. And so I've got that set. My mask looks like that. You can see the white and black representation of your mask. White reveals, black conceals. So everything that I do will be revealed or shown in the white area which is gonna be above the horizon, and it'll be concealed or hidden or not shown in the areas that are black. So let's get into the tools. The first thing I'm gonna do is give it a little bit of warmth uh, here on the temperature. So, I mean, very slight, just like a seven. I love the blue in the sky, so I don't wanna lose that. 
uh, but I wanted to give it a little bit of warmth. I am going to give it some contrast. So I go to about 40 there, and the highlights are coming down negative 58. So a pretty significant amount. And I wanted to isolate that. It's this patch here in the center, which uh, you know is just brighter than the rest of the sky. And it's not blown out at all. You can tell, by the way, by if you hit the J key, that will turn on uh, really dark or blown out spots. Dark, uh, which are basically completely black, will show up in blue, like this one here on the right-hand side. And any blown out spots will show up in red. As you can see, there are no red spots. So I know that I've not um, basically blown out that por portion of the photo, but I still I want to control it as much as possible. So I hit it with highlights again. Um, next up is AI structure. And here I'm going to go about a negative 30. And again, I'm just doing the top of the photo, which is primarily the sky. It's also going to impact haystack rock and the needles over here, as well as that um, hill and the horizon. But honestly, I don't really care. Um, I'm not really focused on that. I mean, it's the focal point. However, it's mostly going to be silhouetted, so I don't really care if it's a little bit soft. So it's fine with me. Uh, landscape enhancer, I'm going to go golden hour. And I'm going to do about a 14 there. And again, just warming up this guy and hitting that top of the photo with a little bit of warmth. Um, now I'm going to go over to the creative tab and I'm going to get glow. And I'm going to do soft focus bright of about 20. So something about like that. And the brightness of about 15. So this is actually, uh, sorry, not 15, negative 15, sorry. Um, this is actually popping a little bit that brighter part in the sky, which is it, just a little bit for dramatic effect, for lack of a better word. So there it is before glow, and there it is after. Again, I'm using soft focus bright. So as the name implies, it adds a soft focus to the brighter areas. And I, I didn't give it a lot, like a 20, but I wanted to bump that up a little bit. I really want the sky to kind of pop and uh, the whole photo to kind of pop. And for me, that kind of worked. Uh, but I definitely recommend if you're going to use that tool, experiment and just kind of mess around and see how it looks on your photo because, of course, every photo is going to be different. And now over to the Professional tab, and here I'm getting Advanced Contrast. And the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is add about a 20 of uh, contrast to the highlights. And then for shadows, I go to about 50. So there you go. And that basically brightens the darker areas. So let me show you this Advanced Contrast. There's Before. You can see it, it almost looks a little bit like there's a vignette there. And after, I feel like the light's a little bit more balanced. Um, I've got a video about advanced contrast. I'll try to remember to put it up there. I'm not going to go into it here. It's very powerful. It does help you manage the light levels a bit. And however, um, I would say there's never a science to it for me. It's always an experimentation kind of thing to where I just get in and say, I wonder if I do this, how it will look on the photo. So I didn't come to those numbers or that tool, uh, you know, the highlights or shadows sliders within the tool. Um, because I knew exactly what I was going to get, I went to it uh, knowing that I wanted to experiment and see how it would impact the light. So sometimes I get that question about advanced contrast. It's kind of hard to predict. It's not like Golden Hour uh, or even you know some of the AI tools where you just kind of know what's going to happen. For me, it's it's a little bit harder to figure out. So uh, at this point, let me show you this layer. Let me turn that off. There you go. Before again, just the sky, and after a bit more pop. So now that I've done that, I need to add a new adjustment layer. And once again, get a gradient mask. And this time, I'm going to work on the bottom. So again, I'm just using masks and layers to isolate specific parts of the photo. And in this case, I'm isolating the bottom this time. And I'm going to do something about like that. So I'm going to say done. And you can see, once again, the representation here. White reveals, black conceals. So all these edits will be revealed in the bottom, which is basically the sand. Okay, first things first, I'm going to go to the light tool. I'm going to get some contrast, and I'm going to go to about 50. Um, and if you recall from the final photo, the sand uh, is going to be a bit more uh, dark, uh, except in some key areas. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm okay with having higher, um, higher contrast there. AI structure, I'm going negative 20 here. And again, this is kind of softening it up, but it's a long exposure. It's wet sand. Soft is exactly what I'm going for. So that works really well here. Uh, golden hour is going to be about a 10 or so. Uh, and again, just giving a little bit of warmth. I, I want to kind of mirror what happened in the top and also this section right here where it's reflecting that kind of orangey pink band in the sky. I want to make sure that those colors look good. Uh, let's see here. Next up is mystical. 
So let me go to mystical, and that's gonna be about a 20. So there you go, adds a little bit of shadow. Now I'm gonna go to Orton, and here I'm gonna do about a 15. Similar kind of thing, adds a little bit of shadow, a little bit of drama. Both of them kind of soften it up, add a little bit of that romantic glow, uh, which I like. And then once again, I'm in advanced contrast, and for shadows, I'm gonna to go to about 50, which is actually pulling back a little bit of the additional um, shadow that was created with Mystical and Orton. Again, this was experimentation. Um, I'll often do things that kind of reverse some of my previous edits, and it's not because I forget or I'm dumb. Uh, well, I may be dumb, uh, and actually I do forget sometimes, just to be honest. Um, but I'm doing it because I edit by feel. I just kind of go with what looks good and what I like, really, is what it comes down to. So I'll be doing something like on a previous layer and think, oh, that looks really good. And then I'll go play around with tools and just kind of jack around with stuff. And then I'll do something like this. It kind of reverses slightly what I did before. And then um, I'll say, well, that looks good too. So it, my, my creativity is a winding road, my friends. Uh, there's, there's no rhyme or reason other than I just want to get to a photo that I like at the end. That's really what it's about. The journey is definitely uh, a crooked path. So now I feel like I'm done with this layer. So let me show you that. Again, it's focused just on the sand. So if you look at it, there's before and after. More contrast, a bit more color pop. Uh, and other than golden hour, it's really just contrast work and things like that that have caused the color to pop. And I didn't want to really oversaturate. So I was trying to be careful there. Um, so now I'm going to go get another adjustment layer. And here I'm going to just create a luminosity mask. Um, I did a luminosity mask video in the past, you know, a couple weeks ago. And in that video, I was always at, all, doing all the edits and then adding a luminosity mask. And people were like, how do you know what it's going to do if you haven't made the mask first? And you don't really. I just know it's going to be a much more subtle implementation. So it's usually guesswork in some regard for me. But in this case, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make the luminosity mask first and then go make some edits because I knew I wanted to apply some of the edits to some of the brighter parts of the photo. And that's what this layer is all about. So the luminosity mask has now been created. And I'm going to click over here on tools and go into essentials and get started. Okay, I'm going to start in the light tool. And once again, I'm going to take the highlights down like a negative 35. Um, I really wanted to just focus on that center section where I still feel like it's a little bit bright. Again, it's not blown out, but you can see that highlight reduction now kicking in. That looks much better, I think. Um, and then I wanted to add some golden hour. And this golden hour is going to be about a 25. And again, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want it to be global. I want to warm up that spot a little bit. And I knew a luminosity mask would help me do that. So I basically created a luminosity mask on this layer to basically focus on that center section of the photo in the sky. So let me show you, let me turn that off. There's before, a little bit brighter, not quite as warm. And after, you can see it's a little bit warmer and a little bit uh, less bright or dark. So I think that looks quite good. And I'm basically done with that layer. That was a luminosity mask specifically that I was thinking about for that portion of the sky. Now, it's gonna affect a little bit of the other parts of the photo, like some of these areas that are a little bit brighter, but that's okay. Overall, I think it looks good. So this was my touch-up layer, and I got a couple things I do here, and then one little trick that I thought was pretty cool. So I'm gonna add that adjustment layer. I'm gonna go in. Now, these are our global adjustments because I haven't done any masking at the layer level. I will mask one of these tools, but let me start with light. I basically take temp, no, sorry, not light. I go into color. I was looking at this and thinking, what? Um, color, uh, I'm going to take this down about a five, the saturation, and the same with vibrance. It's, I love color, just to be honest. I mean, you know, calling a spade a spade. I like colors. I like saturated, big, bold colors. Um, but I, I didn't want to overdo it. I mean, it's come a long way. Wait till I show you what we started with. I don't know if you remember that, but um, it's very different, much more colorful. But I want to be, I'm trying to be reasonable, my friends. I'm trying real hard. So a negative five, yeah, I, I tried 10, but I had to go back to five. So a negative five on saturation and vibrance. Um, and then I went and added a little vignette. And here I just, amount was like negative one. I mean, I really just basically, okay, negative two, whatever. I really just turned it on. Uh, and that was about all I did. Size is like 40. I'm going to choose a subject. Now I'm not going to choose, you might think, hey, the subject, the focal point is Haystack Rock, but I'm actually gonna choose subject to be a little bit to the left of that. I kinda like some of the shadow to the right of it, and I don't wanna um, brighten up that too much. And the reason I say that is because after I do roundness, which is gonna be more of a rectangular shape here, 
I'm going to go get a little inner light. Oops, I don't need to brush that. Um, I'm going to get a little inner light and go to about 15. So, you know, not a lot. It's just a little bit of pop. And I'm kind of airing a little bit to the left because for me, my eye is a little bit like, all right, it's dark over there. So I'm drawn to Haystack Rock. And then with the shape of the clouds kind of going up and to the left, also those being the brighter parts, my eye kind of goes Haystack Rock and then up and to the left. And that's another reason I place the vignette center kind of to the left because I don't want it over to the right. I don't really want to brighten up the beach over there. There's nothing on the beach. It was empty. It was after a storm. I was super happy to have it to myself. And, uh, you know, it looks like it, it's empty because it is. So when I turn off the vignette, there's before and there's after. Pretty subtle. Nothing much. But the next thing I did I thought was kind of fun. And that is I went and got glow. Uh, once again, I'm going to use Soft Focus Bright, and I'm going to go to like a 33. But the truth is, I don't want that to hit the sky because I'm not interested in that sky blowing out. What I'm interested in is this little section there really popping because that's like white surf where the waves are crashing because it's a two-minute exposure. It's, uh, you know, it's just kind of... Uh, What's the word? Uh, well, it's flat uh, instead of like a rocky sea, but it, it's got a nice little bit of pop. So I'm going to take a gradient mask and I'm just going to drop that glow tool right here on top of that just so that it kind of pops in that area. And all I'm trying to do is just make that pop a little bit. So let, let me show you what that did. Let me turn that off. If you just look at that center section, you can see there it's less brighter. And now that I added glow, it's much brighter. And that kind of pops a little bit. And I really like that idea. I didn't want glow to go into the sky. As I said, I don't want anything brighter in the sky. I think it's fine the way it is. And I just wanted that center section to pop. And that's really the whole workflow. So you can see all my layers, base layer, minor adjustments, luminosity mask with a look on it, a duplicate of that with a reduced amount, a gradient mask for the sky, a gradient mask for the uh, foreground or the, the beach, if you will, another luminosity mask just to hit a couple of things and then here are some uh, specific edits that were global two of them and then of course a gradient mask again to pop that glow right there in that center section and that's my whole photo my friends let me show you the start there's my starting photo and there's my current state and again i took the saturation down a little bit other than really hitting it with golden hour you you can see i didn't do like a bunch of color adjustments i didn't do any i don't even think um, well, the look, actually. The blue hour look had some, and I used that twice with the luminosity mask. Um, but outside of that, I wasn't like dragging saturation or vibrance. Um, contrast does a lot to color, uh, so you, you kind of got to be careful. And if you don't like the saturated look, that, totally get it. That's fine. Um, it's easy to reduce in uh, Luminar. I kind of like it, and I slightly reduced it a little bit. But if you look at the before and after, we came a long way. It's a very dramatic seascape, but I really like how I popped that center section at the end and just kind of managed the light and the contrast um, throughout the photo and the edit. And that's how I did it, using masks and layers and just stacking things, getting creative, and just trying to control how I wanted the photo to look. That's my workflow for this one, my friends. I do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. I'm sure I'll be seeing you soon. Don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and uh, let me know in the comments down below what you thought about it. I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take good care of yourselves out there, and adios.